This is a case study of a 45-year-old male who presented with a carous lesion in the mesial aspect of his upper left first molar tooth. The case involves the restoration of the tooth using composite resin restorative materials. Visual examination demonstrates that some staining and discoloration of the enamel at the mesial aspect of the upper left first molar tooth. Rubber dam has been applied using the split dam technique to ensure good isolation and maintenance of a dry operating field. Initially a wedge and interproximal guard from Dentsupply's Paladent Plus system is placed. This helps to both protect the neighbouring tooth from incidental damage and wedge the teeth apart during the procedure. This will gradually widen the incidental space. Increasing the incidental space further assists in allowing subsequent placement of the sectional matrix system and aids in establishing a better contact area in the final restoration. Once the guard is in place, the tooth is cleansed and dried to allow further examination of the carious lesion. Access is gained to the carious tooth tissue through the mesial marginal ridge using a dense supply high dye 671 diamond burr in an air turbine handpiece. Care is taken to be minimally invasive as possible as the use of the composite resin will provide support to the remaining tooth tissue, especially when using Dense Supply's SDR Smart Dentin replacement. This reduces the amount of cuspal flexure due to its low polymerization shrinkage. The final remnants of infected dentine are removed by hand instruments and stainless steel rosehead burrs in a handpiece running at between 10,000 to 20,000 revolutions per minute. The cavity is inspected before removing the Paladin Plus wedge guard. Inspection of the wedge guard reveals areas of damage that have occurred during preparation of the cavity that would have otherwise damaged the adjacent tooth. With the interdental wedge still in place, the sectional matrix band from the Paladent Plus system is placed and the tab bent over the marginal ridge of the adjacent tooth to leave a clear operating field. The ring clasp from the system is then placed to fit over the top of the interdental wedge and hold the matrix band firmly against the periphery of the upper first molar tooth to ensure good anatomical form of the final restoration. The shade is taken using Dentsupply Ceramics Mono Shade Guide. The Nano Hybrid Ceramics Mono has been chosen in this case due to its level of opacity. This prevents discoloration of the final restoration due to any shine through from the underlying tooth tissue. The cavity is then selectively etched using Dentsupply Detray Conditioner 36 with only the enamel margins being etched. Etching of dentin has been shown to cause potential irritation of the pulpal tissues, believed to be due to a change in hydrostatic pressure in the dentinal tubules that leads to post-operative sensitivity. Etching of the enamel margins ensures as strong a bond as possible to the margins of the restoration. This counters the polymerization shrinkage that occurs in composite resin materials that can ultimately lead to micro-leakage around the margins of the restoration. The etch is then rinsed off for at least 20 seconds and gently dried. Dent Supply's XP Bond is then applied to both enamel and denting to ensure an even coverage that is not so thick that pooling occurs in the base of the cavity. The chosen shade of Ceramics Mono is then applied to reconstruct the proximal wall of the tooth to effectively change the cavity from class 2 to class 1. This allows the material to be configured to a close match to the original marginal ridge then the material is light cured for 20 seconds. At this stage, it is up to the clinician as to whether to leave the sectional matrix band in place or not. Fortunately, with the Dent Supply Paladent Plus system, access is not compromised with the band still in place. The base of the cavity can then be built up using SDR, Smart Denting Replacement, that can be built up in increments of 4mm deep, with each increment being light cured for 20 seconds. The SDR should be built up until it is one millimeter below the height of the marginal ridge. The final stage of the restoration can now be built up using Ceramics Mono again, building each cuspal ridge one at a time. Each ridge is constructed to closely mimic the shape of the original ridge using a dense supply silicone handled burnisher with a zirconium nitrate coating that prevents the composite resin material sticking to the instrument. Each increment is tack cured for around 5 seconds before the entire occlusal surface is light cured for a full 20 seconds. The ring and the wedge are then removed before removing the sectional matrix band and the excess material carefully removed using a fine high dye diamond burr in an air turbine. 
The restoration is dried and inspected in preparation for final polishing. The initial finishing is carried out using an enhanced finishing cup before moving on to a pogo polishing cup for the final polish. The restoration is rinsed and dried before applying a final coat of XP Bond to provide a final sheen to the restoration. The most important thing for me is being able to use one manufacturer's materials, whether it's a simple or complex restorative procedure, Dentsply ensure their products go hand in hand with the instruments and materials that come before or after the clinical procedure. I believe this approach prioritises the demand for reliable, safe, efficient and simple solutions which benefit both myself and my patients.